My name is Bethan and I've come to the Wordsworth Trust to do my first ever go at some research work. I've been looking at representation of working class people in political caricatures of the 1790s. So I thought I'd start by reading a quotation from William Wordsworth's letter to John Wilson uh, in response to John Wilson's comments on Wordsworth's poem, The Idiot Boy. So John Wilson said he didn't like the poem and Wordsworth responded with, the loathing and disgust which many people have at the sight of an idiot is a feeling which, though having some foundation in human nature, is not necessarily attached to it in any virtuous degree, but is owing in great measure to false delicacy and, if I may say without rudeness, a certain want of comprehensiveness of thinking and feeling. So here Wordsworth challenges John Wilson's dismissal of the poem, and he challenges his his comfort uh, as a member of a certain class who likes to remove themselves from uh, people they don't want to associate with, whether that's the working class or generally underrepresented people in that century. And within Wordsworth's lifetime uh, there was something of a golden age of political caricature, especially during the revolution, which we know that Wordsworth supported in his youth. And so it brings the question, what would Wordsworth think of those being represented in these political caricatures, and in many of them being discredited and being mocked. Satirists like James Gilray mocked the politics that Wordsworth ascribed to in his youth by parodying uh, the masses and the, the kind of foundation of, or what he saw as the foundation of that movement, which includes the working classes. And so we see some really quite offensive depictions of the word working classes in order to discredit any politicians or uh, supporters of the revolution who might associate with those people. So the first example that we're going to look at is James Gilray's The Friend of Humanity or The Knife Grinder from 1797. So we see on the left hand side with the Whig politician George Tierney, the colours are very light, the resemblance is, is quite accurate, it looks like George Tierney, he's not necessarily parodied. Also he's upright, he looks sophisticated uh, and behind him there's carriage and we see the street tailing off into the background. And then turning to the right hand side of the print where we have the working class person, the colours are much darker, he's coming out of a pub and he looks scruffy, his clothes are torn, he's got a limp and if you look at the face you start to see a slight kind of caricature look, maybe more so than with Tierney. He's got quite a menacing face, he's sneering and seems to be laughing at Tierney a bit. So this print first appeared in the Anti-Jacobin, which was a conservative magazine against the revolution, and it appears with a poem, and that poem is a parody of Southey's sapphics or his collected poetry, and in that poem, we see that Tierney is saying to this, this person, the knife grinder, asking him, haven't, haven't you read your Thomas Paine? And so Gilray uh, seems to mock Tierney for associating with the knife grinder and mock him for naively uh, asking whether this knife grinder will have read the works of Thomas Paine. Thomas Paine's revolutionary writing. Sothi is also parodied in another of Gilray's prints, uh, which will turn to next. And so in New Morality by James Gilray, which also appeared in the Anti-Jacobin magazine, near the centre, towards the right, we can see a figure holding up Southey's sapphics again, uh, his poetry, and in the pocket of this figure is Joan of Arc. So we can assume that it is Southey, but he's depicted with the head of an ass so not very flattering. And initially, when Sothi saw this in the Anti-Jacobin, he responded lightheartedly in a letter to his brother Tom, but he also warned of the danger of having uh, unlimited power. And so if we go back to uh, the quotation from Wordsworth's letter, we're talking again about the, the danger of the chattering classes um, inflaming hatred towards and othering an underrepresented group of people. Also in New Morality, uh, you can see that Gilray's done uh, yet another offensive portrayal of the working class people. So over to the right of the print, around the high priest, there are four 
revolutionaries uh, clearly meant to be working class figures and in the centre one of the revolutionaries is raising um, what looks like a dustpan and brush or a sweep and in these portrayals Gilroy uses a, a kind of childlike imagery or even hybrid imagery we can see that one of them has a tail um, and kind of animal feet and quite common for Gilroy something you can see across a lot of his prints in representation of the working class people are these oversized jaws, oversized lips, a skeletal flat nose and quite scary looking eyes, usually squatting, uh, one of them even has his backside out, uh, and so it's yet another offensive portrayal. And you can see that similarly another in another print that the Wordsworth Trust has, French Democrats surprising the royal runaways, in which there are similar misshapen faces and threatening looks, all of which draw on the grotesque. We can see that not everyone in this image is necessarily working class. Part of the reason they're parodied is because they're French, and there was, of course, a huge anti-French feeling in England. But in the background, like with New Morality, we see someone raising a hammer and a sweep, quite an obvious message. And so we find ourselves asking, who were these prints intended for? Do caricatures really democratise art if they are mocking the, a certain class? Are they aimed at the working classes because of their the kind of uh, visual aspect? Or are they aimed at like-minded aristocracy? Or are they aimed at the very people they parody, the opposition, the politicians? And it's important to remember that these prints were displayed in shop windows and were visible on the street. So really anyone could walk past a shop window and see uh, a print like this. So we therefore also ask, would working class passers-by who might happen to see these pictures take offence at the highly insulting representations of people like themselves because they've almost become a comic spectacle in spite of them being potential spectators? For satirists like Gilray, who produce some caricatures against revolution and inherently insult an underrepresented people, it's parodying the working class which seems to help them discredit revolutionaries. And it's this kind of othering that Wordsworth speaks about so beautifully in his letter to John Wilson, and he speaks against that othering.